This is a continuation of the look at atomic structure, and in particular the information we can obtain from something called a mass spectra. Let's take a look at what that is. Suppose I begin here with a, a gas, and, and this gas is a mixture of two isotopes of substance X, some that have a relative atomic mass of 24 and some 26. And let's say within this sample um, we have 80% that's the lighter 24, and 20% that's the heavier that weighs 26. We put the gas through something called a mass spectroscope, where it's exposed to x-rays. And in my first case, I'm going to consider that the x-rays singly ionize our gas. So what that would mean is it removes or promotes one electron. So my gas, X, here would lose an electron and then develop a plus one charge. So I would have X24 gas and it would produce an electron. And in a similar fashion, I would have the other isotope also developing a positive one charge. And it has a mass of 26 and would also produce an electron. This is what is detected and presented in the mass spectra. So over here on a graph, I would have for isotope that weighs 24, I would have a line extending upwards, indicating somewhere around 80%. And the 26, which there's less of, would only go about a quarter as high and be down here at about 20%. Now, this axis, m over z, refers to mass divided by charge. And in the case of my singly ionized material, the charge is 1 plus. That's why these numbers can be used here, because essentially I'm just dividing them by 1. What would happen if I used a higher energy form of x-rays, where it was doubly ionized? Well, then the products that would come out would now have a 2 plus charge. And they would still have the mass of 24, but liberate two electrons. Similarly, the other isotope would also develop a 2 plus charge. It would still have a mass of 26 and liberate two electrons. Now if I went to plot this data on the graph, I would have to divide the mass by two because I've removed two electrons. So I would have had a peak, say down here at 12. If I take 24 and divide by two, it would still have been 80 high. And the other peak would have been at 13 because 26 divided by two and it would still be here. So this is the graph I would have gotten if it was doubly ionized and this one singly ionized. I should mention at this point that singly ionized materials are the most common mass spectra you'll have to deal with. So let's take a look at how we're going to take some information from a mass spectra and determine the relative atomic mass. Now, we're here given the information for gallium. Now, it's also present in your IB data booklet. Right there is our answer, the essentially the relative atomic mass. But we're asked to use the data that we're given below. So we're going to start off by considering 100 atoms. The relative mass then of those 100 atoms would be, well, 61 of them weigh 69, and 39 of them would weigh 71. So multiplying that together, I get 6,978. So that represents the mass of my 100 atoms. Now what we want to do is get 
the average mass of but a single atom. So I'm going to take that mass then and divide that mass by 100. And that then gives me the relative atomic mass of 69.78. Now you'll notice it's not an exact match with what's on our IB data booklet because the data that's in your IB data booklet represents thousands of samples of gallium and mine represents but one. So there's a use of mass spectra.